Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel. Today we are making the Kai Top. This pattern comes with a short sleeve and long sleeve option. So before you get started, you'll want to decide which sleeve you want to make and make sure you have the right pattern pieces for it. For materials, you will need swimwear fabric, quarter inch swimwear elastic, a cutting tool, a loop turner or some way to turn your straps, a safety pin is fine, and a seam ripper. This style is fully reversible, so you can pick two fabrics you like and both can be worn on the outside. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna call the red fabric my main fabric and the dark printed fabric is gonna be called my lining fabric. So first you're gonna cut all of your pieces. The pattern pieces themselves say how to cut and how many of each to cut. So you can reference that as you go. Here I'm gonna cut into my lining fabric and I'm gonna cut one back two mirrored front pieces and two mirrored sleeve pieces. What I mean by mirrored is you'll cut one piece with the pattern face up, then flip the pattern piece and cut another piece with the pattern face down. This way you are cutting opposites. Or you can do what I'm doing here, which is just folding the fabric so I'm able to cut two layers at once and this will create mirrored pieces as well. Then in my main fabric, I'm going to do the exact same thing and cut one in my back, two mirrored fronts, and two mirrored sleeves. In addition to this, I'm going to cut a strap piece that's going to be used for the tie. The exact measurements are inside the pattern, but around 25 inches long and one and a quarter inch wide is about what I recommend. In this video, I cut the strap way too short, so just ignore that part. So now we've cut all of our pieces. For sewing, we're first gonna be focusing on the bodice pieces. So get your front pieces and your back pieces out for both the lining and the outer fabrics. Place the front pieces onto the back pieces with right sides together and line them up at the shoulder seams. Pin and then sew all the shoulder seams to attach the fronts to the backs. Unless otherwise specified, seam allowance is a quarter inch or six millimeters for this entire tutorial. For this, I'm using a four thread overlock stitch, but if you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch or any stretch stitch of your choice. Also, I'm just using a good quality polyester thread. The one that I use is Gudeman Mara and I use it for everything. So now the shoulder seams are sewn and what we are now going to do is attach the sleeves. You're going to do this with both the lining pieces and the outer pieces. So don't forget, we're going to be repeating this. I'm going to lay my sleeves onto my sleeve holes with right sides together. The sleeves and the sleeve holes both have notches on the pattern, so you can use those to help things line up and also so you can make sure the front of the sleeve is matched up to the front side of the bodice and same thing for the back. Sleeves aren't usually symmetrical, so you do wanna pay attention and make sure you're using the sleeve the correct way. And since this isn't gonna line up perfectly, as you can see, I'm just pinning at the notches, and then when I go to sew, I'm gonna do my best to ease the sleeve in and line things up. Now go back over to your machine again and using an overlock or any stretch stitch, sew down both sleeves and do this for both the lining and the outer pieces. Now the sleeves are attached and you can pretty much see how this is gonna come together, but now we're going to attach the lining and the outer pieces and we're also gonna be attaching our elastic. So open up one of the pieces so it's laid flat as shown. Then match the other piece right on top with right sides together. We're going to sew and attach elastic to a few different places. First, the end of the sleeve. If you're making a long sleeve, then this will be at the wrist. And if you're making the short sleeve, then it will be the upper arm. But either way, it's still the end of the sleeve. 
You're also going to sew and attach elastic to the bottom line of the back piece as well as each of the front pieces, which this is kind of, you could call it the waistline or the underbust. Then finally, sew and attach elastic to the entire neckline. At this point, you are not sewing the inner corner of the bust pieces. If you want to skip some seam ripping in the next step, you can stop the elastic about a half an inch before you get to that inside corner, but don't worry about it unless you want to. In this video, I'm just gonna be seam ripping. So again, I'm using my four thread overlock stitch, but you can use a zigzag or any stretch stitch. And my machine has an elastic foot, which just helps me guide in the elastic in the right spot. So if you have one of those, then it's very helpful, but it is not a necessity. Also, you do not want to stretch the elastic while sewing. You want it to sew on evenly without any sort of stretching or bunching. So because of this, your elastic should be equal to the seam length. Next, we are going to sew the inner corners of the bust pieces, but we are not gonna sew this with elastic. Just use a regular overlock or stretch stitch to get this closed. Then we're gonna do some seam ripping to create the strap channel here. So this is why I said earlier, you could just stop the elastic, but I know that can be difficult for some, so I just wanted to show you an alternative here. I'm marking where I want my strap channel to go, and then I'm gonna seam rip this area as well as fully rip out the elastic. The tie uses quarter inch elastic, so they want this opening to be slightly more than that. And I recommend making it about a half an inch because then it won't be too tight of a fit. When I do this, I end up unraveling a bit of the surrounding threads. So it's probably a good idea to go back over either end of the opening just to make sure everything is secured. So now you should have these gaps on both bust pieces that will allow our tie to go through later on. And you can also see that I reinforced a lot of my stitching. Now is probably the most difficult part just because it's a weird maneuver. So I'm not gonna speed this part up. My goal is to sew the side seam and the bottom of the sleeve all in one step. And I'm gonna be sewing the lining and the outer fabric all at once. So this is gonna be through four layers of fabric. To do this, I will need my right sides to be together. So start with one side at a time. First, I like to take the bust piece and flip it so I can see the right side, then pull it down under the sleeve still and toward the back panel. Now you can line up the side seams of the bodice. Then the end of the sleeve, you're gonna flip downward onto itself so right sides are together. And then fold in the rest of the sleeve seam so it's completely lined up. If you're doing this correctly, the front pieces should be completely inside of the back piece. And you can now see I'll be able to sew from the end of the sleeve all the way up and down the side seam of the bodice. And before I do that, I find it helpful to first sew the inner two layers together with a basting stitch. And a basting stitch is a long straight stitch that's meant to be temporary. This is gonna make it much easier to sew all four layers later on. So if you've done your basting stitch, you can now sew all four layers together, either with an overlock stitch or a zigzag stitch or any stretch stitch. Here I am not using elastic, but it wouldn't hurt to use some transparent elastic for this, just to add a little extra strength to that seam. And make sure to do this with both side seams slash sleeve seams. So everything is sewn and now here is where the magic happens. Get out your seam ripper and rip a two to three inch hole somewhere along an existing seam. Before moving on, you can go back and reinforce the threads around this hole. Then through this hole, take the entire top to the right side. When you're doing this, you'll need to pull the sleeves out. And now we have a reversible top and we just need to finish a few details. So first, you'll want to close up the hole we ripped, either using a top stitch or doing an invisible stitch by hand. Then we're going to switch gears and sew up our tie. So match the strap with right sides together and sew and attach elastic to the raw edges. Afterwards, use your loop turner to take the strap to the right side. Now we're going to finish up our strap channel that we started earlier by top stitching the channel into place. So using a straight stitch, 
sew the strap channel about 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge. Here I'm using a straight stitch. Then you can use your loop turner to get through the strap channel and pull the tie through. And that finishes the Kai top. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate your patience and support as I navigate my business as a new mom and trying to balance work with everything else. All right, I hope you guys enjoy this pattern and I will see you next time.